Right now, the national unemployment rate stands at 5.8 percent. But our first guest this hour says that the labor market is being held back by lawmakers who are paying people more to stay home than they'd be making if they were actually working right now. Joining us to talk more about it is Senator Pat Toomey. He's a Republican from Pennsylvania. He's also the ranking member of the Senate Banking Committee. And, and, and let's talk this through, Senator. Your, your argument is that this is a distorted job market right now. Lay that out. Sure. Well, Becky, uh, you know, if you can receive unemployment benefits indefinitely that pay more than it pays you to go to work, well, a certain number of people are not going to go to work. I think that's just common sense. But, you know, I think the big picture here that we shouldn't lose sight of is our economy is not in a recovery mode anymore. We're in a full-blown expansion. We were in recovery in the third quarter of last year when we grew by 30 percent. Now we've got a really robust expansion. As you know, the Fed is projecting 7 percent real GDP growth this year, unemployment getting down to four and a half percent. And with prices rising all around us, it's still, it's 2023 before there's a median agreement that we get off zero. And we're still buying bonds at $120 billion a month. I, the thing that I can't understand is when you have really robust growth, tremendous improvement in the employment market, and right now we've got about as many job openings as there are people looking for jobs, and prices are right. It's not like the inflation picture is benign, and they are still in such an accommodative mode. This, I think, is dangerous. Senator, is your beef with the Fed, or is it with your own House and Senate? It's both. I mean, you guys, you guys are both. the ones who you know, gave these look, extended benefits. Well, not the most recent round, right? The March bill passed exclusively with Democrat votes, right? That was a huge blowout spending bill that had really almost nothing to do with COVID. The economy didn't need it. It was counterproductive. I opposed it, as did every Republican in Congress. Prior to that, last year, we were in a very different place. Look, in March, when we first passed these, these extraordinary bills, you remember what, what things were like a, a year ago, March. I still didn't think it was a good idea to systematically pay people more not to work than they make working, but it was a price the Democrats insisted on to do the overall rescue package. So that's how it got started. This it, going on indefinitely is just a terrible idea, but that's only part of the problem. I really do think that what the Fed is doing, this unbelievably extreme accommodative policy, when you have a really robust recovery or expansion underway, I, I can't reconcile those two. Isn't this a problem that to some extent is starting to solve itself? I mean, I mean, I think you have 23 states now that have said that they are not going to pay those extended benefits anymore. And by the way, they run out in a couple of months anyway. I, I, I feel like a couple of months from now, we're going to see a, a, a much more realistic picture. Um, I, I think the picture gets better in, in the fall. And yes, you're absolutely right. There are a lot of states. They, they're, they're not the most populous states, but there are a lot of states that are uh, refusing to participate in this. But I'm, I'm concerned about what kind of damage we'll be doing on the inflation side by then. And, and I, I'm concerned also that the Fed has backed itself into a, a dangerous paradigm, which is to say, when you establish that the target isn't to keep inflation below 2 percent, it's to average 2 percent over some indeterminate period of time. And now we're above 2 percent, but don't worry, it's all transitory. That kind of forces the Fed to sit back and wait. And we know that monetary policy affects the economy with long and variable lags. So how long are they going to wait and how much are they going to have to do then to catch up? So what, what would you like to have seen the Fed do yesterday? Well, look, I, I think tapering should have started a long time ago, frankly. Um, so I would like to see a um, more definitive movement. In the, I mean, it's nice that we can now talk about tapering and it's not squared. You know, they don't have to talk about talking about it. But look, we need to get on with this, um, in my view. I would, I would have hoped that the, uh, <laughs> the median projection for uh, moving off zero on uh, uh, Fed funds wouldn't have been 2023, but would be next year. Um, I, I just think we need to move towards normalizing as soon as we can. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.